الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد صحبه وسلم ما بعد I wanted to talk about something which is incredibly important for us to to contemplate and try to remedy and this is the issue or the problem of misguidance of our youth and I wanted to mention four primary reasons that we experience misguidance of our youth and then briefly talk about the way to remedy this situation so some of the reasons the first reason and probably the most important of these reasons which the other reasons fall under is a lack of knowledge this is one of the reasons why we have misguidance in many of the Muslim communities with the Muslim youth is that they plain and simply have a lack of knowledge and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said من يريد الله به خيرا يفقه في الدين that whenever Allah wants good for a person he gives him understanding of the knowledge or he gives him wisdom and understanding of the religion and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another authentic hadith من سلك طريقا يلتلمسه به علم سهل الله له طريقا إلى الجنة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم said that whoever traverses the path of knowledge, then Allah will make easy for them the path to paradise. So this is the path. That's the way, the sabil and najah. That is the the path and the means for our success and the means for the success of the uh, of, of our youth is to seek sound Islamic knowledge so the first reason why we have misguidance amongst our youth is due to a lack of knowledge the second reason is the distance that the youth or the youth are distanced from the scholars they are away and feel alienated from the scholars in Islam. However, it's not for the scholars of Islam to come running to the youth, but rather it's for the youth to come running and searching for the people of knowledge. And this is the way, the methodology of the Salaf al of the pious predecessors in Islam. We find that the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and the Tabi'een, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, have mercy upon them, uh, uh, all of them, and be pleased with them all. That they used to travel just to hear one hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam from those people who narrated the uh, hadiths of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So they traveled sometimes to different countries, and it wasn't as we have in the time and means of transport that we have. It's so easy for us to get on an airplane, and now just open the internet to go to the web pages of the major scholars that uh, of this time. We can go to their and, and download their lectures and so forth. And if we don't have access to the Arabic language, then we can at least find many translations of their, their speech and their fatawa and, and their um, explanations of the important books in Aqidah and Fiqh and Hadith and so forth. So the early scholars, this is their minhaj, this was their methodologies that they used to travel in order to obtain even one hadith. However, our youth are so far from the scholars, they do not uh, seek the knowledge and they do not try to come closer to the scholars. And even we have situations, for those of us who live in Muslim lands, where we have youth and, and people who don't try to benefit themselves while they're here, just for the sake of their own soul, not for the sake of calling themselves a student of knowledge or anything, but they still distance themselves from the scholars. They don't go to one lecture. They don't ask one question. When they live in the lands, for example, in Saudi Arabia, we have some of the major scholars in this time. You have the Hayat al-Kibar al-Ulama, you have scholars in every, almost in every city in Saudi Arabia you can find students of knowledge and you and you can almost certainly find scholars and scholars of Ahl sunnah You can find them everywhere. However, you have some people who live here for years and years and years and don't ask the scholars even one question and don't sit in even one halaqa, one, one simple uh, sitting in order to gain some strengthening in their faith.
And this is a big mistake and something incredibly dangerous that we have to encourage our youth to stay away from. The third um, reason for the misguidance of our youth is the negative influence. And this, these negative influences, they can be issues in the dunya, for example, living in America and those places. Our youth are influenced by music, they're influenced by uh, having girlfriends and boyfriends, they're influenced by many bad, uh, and drugs and, and so forth. They're influenced by all these bad uh, external forces, which are, are negative and can destroy the Muslim and destroy his belief. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, Al-Ma'asi barid al-Kufr. He said that sinfulness is a means to disbelief. Meaning the more a person commits, it, 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 this is a means in, in to destroy your religion. Because a person can get so far in sin that they leave the, the wajibat and they believe that the muharramat become lawful for them. This is how far astray some of our youth have become. So one of the things is the sins in being in sinful environments. This is one of the reasons for the youth's misguidance. The other reason, which is uh, from the janib or from the, 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 the way of shubahat or desires, or, uh, uh, or um, not desires, but in fact the shubahat, meaning the doubtfulness or ways in which people's distorted aqidah. And it has to do with people having a distorted creed and sitting with people whose creed or whose beliefs are distorted. What do I mean by this? I mean this negative influence, as the Salaf used to say, they used to view that the people of innovation who uh, innovated in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion, they viewed that they were more dangerous than the people of sin. And this is because the people, a, a, a person who's involved in sin, they will... They, they feel the need to make repentance. But the person who's on innovation, they believe they're on the correct path. And they will continue on their innovation until they die, more than likely, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them away from this. How does this apply to our youth? This applies to our youth that we have many people, especially in the West, who are not qualified to give fatwa, and who misguide our youth by encouraging them to... Uh, go and fight in, in what they believe is jihad, to, to encourage them to uh, blow themselves up, to encourage them to uh, make takfir or declare other Muslims to be non-Muslims, to uh, they encourage them in all kind of fa false ideologies. They encourage them to be um, Sufis, to you know indulge in practices that are not uh, sanctioned by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, nor by the Salaf al-Salih, no, nor by the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. So these kind of innovative practices and these individuals who call to the hellfire in fact, because they're not calling to Islam, never ever think just because someone is a Muslim and because someone, people call him Shaykh or her Shaykha or because he's the Imam of a Masjid or he's the leader of a certain group or Jama'at that they are a du'at al-khair, that they're a person who calls to guidance and goodness. Never be deceived by that. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said to us in an authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, which is a hadith of Hudayf ibn Yaman, which is a hadith of about fitna. He let us know that in that there would come a time where there would be du'at ala abwaab jahannam. That there would be people who propagate and call, they claim, they call to Islam, but in fact they are at the bab or the gates of Jahannam. They are calling to the hellfire. Why? Because they're calling to things the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't call to. For example, many of our youth were distorted and 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 corrupted by people like uh, in 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 the UK. You have people like Abu Hamza Misri. You have people like. Uh, who people call Sheikh Faisal, Faisal al Jamaiki. You have people like uh, Abu Qatada al Filistini. All these people were du'at al Abu Abu Jahannam. Bila shak. We shouldn't have any doubt about this. We're not making takfir of them. I'm not saying they're not Muslim. They were Muslim. They are Muslim. However, they distort the principles of Islam. They make false fatwa. Fatwa which cause 
people to lose their lives. Fatwa which cause people to, and they lose their lives in many ways. People get involved with those ideologies and so many people they've lost their families, their children and their wives because they're in prison because they had a false ideology. They didn't have something that brought them closer to Allah. They didn't get involved in something that gave them taqwa. They didn't get involved in things that helped to give Islam its, pres, uh, its, prestige, its prestigious place, where it belongs, and where it is. But in fact, us as Muslims, we are the weak ones. But they didn't invite people to that. Instead, they invited people, they made, declared fatawa when they none of them had the right to do so. None of those individuals have the right to be called scholars, nor the right to make fatawa and mislead the people and mislead the youth. And how many of our youth are locked up? How many of the youth are being set up by the FBI and all these other intelligence agencies who prey upon their weakness? The youth, they want goodness. But yet they were influenced by du'at ala abwaab jahannam and they go astray because of this. So this negative influence is something we have to be far away from. And, and we have to encourage our youth to seek knowledge from ahl ilm from ahl fiqh from ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, the people of hikmah, the people of wisdom, the people of knowledge, the people who know Islam by its textual proofs and practice it. And the people who call people to khair. And what is the khair? They call people to kitab Allah. And they call people to the sunnah, sunnah al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they call people to the methodology of understanding Islam, which is the methodology the correct methodology is that of the Sahaba If you see someone who's not calling you to this Run from that person Run from them And go to the people who call to the sunnah of the Prophet The fourth thing that we have to be cautious of for To correct our youth Is that our youth are easily weak They, they are weak Because they have such a desire for change as youth All of us want change We all want to see uh, the Muslims return to khair and the Muslims to be uh, in, in, a, uh, um, in a position uh, to be righteous, practicing this righteous, beautiful religion of Islam. And we want to see the Muslims not being under the feet of other people in other nations. But we have to, the only way that we can uh, obtain this is by going back to what the people before us did. And they were they based the religion based on the Quran and based on the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and based on the methodology of the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anu Majma'in. So the youth have a desire to see the change. They're they're affected by what they see in Somalia, the 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 the, the harm that we see uh, being done to the people in Somalia and the discord and the disharmony and the destruction and the blowing up of and killing of one another, the wanton killing. The whole ummah feels this and is hurt by this. And we feel the pain of what's going on in Iraq. And we feel the pain of what's going on in Syria. And we feel the, we feel the pain of what's going on in Libya. And we feel, feel the pain of what's going on in Yemen. And where the Muslims are being hurt. And where the Muslims are suffering. And where the Muslims are living in places where they have no stability. And what our brothers and sisters feel in Pakistan and in Kashmir and wherever. We feel this pain. And in Nigeria. However... The only way we can correct this is by following the path of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the methodology of the Salaf al And the Salaf used to say, there's a very famous statement, they, uh, I believe this is a statement of Imam Malik or Imam Shafi'i, rahimahumullah ta'ala, where one of those great Imams said, La yaslah, what, what means, ya, La yaslaha, uh, he said that this, the nation, will not be corrected and rectified. This Our situation will not be rectified, except by what rectified the original uh, community. I mean, the original community of Muslims. What rectified them? How did the Sahaba, what was their tarbiyah? How were they raised up? They were raised up by the Quran. They were there during the revelation. And they adhered to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. They had him, salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi. They had him in their midst. And they practiced that and understood it. And the generous name, after the Prophet ﷺ died, they practiced and went to the Sahaba. And they referred to the Sahaba how they understood the religion. And then those after them, they referred to the Sahaba. And they referred to the 
to, to those, to the tabi'een, and they tabi'a tabi'een, and so on and so forth. This is the methodology of Ahl sunnah This is the way to rectify the community of the Muslims. This is one of the reasons, this is this lack of, of adhering to knowledge, understanding Qur'an, understanding the sunnah, understanding the methodology of the Salaf al-Salih. This is the, re- and not practicing it. This is the reasons for the problems in our communities, and for our youth going astray, and we ask that Allah the Almighty corrects us and helps us and forgives us and bless us with and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to do those deeds which come closer to Him and correct our youth, the Muslim youth, wherever they may be, whether it be in the UK, whether it be in America, whether it be in Saudi Arabia, whether it be in Japan, whether it be in Indonesia. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite the hearts of the Muslims on Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa Fahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 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 w